There's uh, our first view of Dragon Endeavor re-entering the Earth's atmosphere with the Axiom-1 crew. Heat shield doing all that work to keep that, uh, to keep that ablative heat, or to keep the heat ablated from the vehicle uh, as it's re-entering at those speeds. Yeah, so this is a shot from our infrared tracking camera. Once again, the crew, uh, you know, they're, they're slowing down from their orbital velocity of 17,500 miles per hour. That heat shield is utilizing the Earth's atmosphere to help slow the vehicle down. Once again, we are in an expected loss of signal, or LOS period. Uh, essentially, we're not able to receive any communication from the crew at this point in time. But as I said before, expected. The crew knows that. The teams on the ground right. here know that. Right, and that was one of the critical roles uh, earlier of the getting acquisition. Dragon SpaceX com check. Loud and clear, Sarah. Cruise to its side. Copy that. Great to hear from you. All right, there we heard the voice of Commander MLA, Michael Lopez Alegria. Uh, they're just confirming that the, the crew, yep. they're doing good. Right on schedule, too. Yeah. As we mentioned before, the external temperature of the capsule is about 3,500 degrees as it, uh, you know, makes its way through the Earth's atmosphere. But the crew, they're comfortable inside. Uh, Dragon, well, you can expect automated parachute deploy on at standard altitude. Copy that, sir. All right, so just a heads up there to the crew that they can expect to feel those initial drogue parachutes deploy. Right. Um, as I was saying before, the crew's comfortable. You know, they, the, while the exterior of the capsule is warming up, we are purging the, um, the internal cabin and their suits with nitrox or nitrogen oxygen mi mixture to keep them comfortable and cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, as we're waiting for confirmation that dragon shoots have deployed, uh, you know, just prior to the deployment of the initial drogue chutes, Dragon will automatically safe the propulsion system. Uh, Dragon then deploys its drogue parachutes to stabilize and decelerate the vehicle, like you mentioned earlier, Kate. Now, just before the, the, the deployment of those drogue parachutes, seats automatically rotate 26 degrees to keep the crew within acceptable um, or G limits for entry and landing. Uh, without the drogue chutes, we would have to make the mains three times stronger and heavier. Um, and of course, everything about spaceflight is about weight. Right. So if Dragon you... SpaceX, brace for drogue window. Bracing. All right, so just a couple moments here until those drogue parachutes are released. Shortly after the drogues are released, we'll see the release of the main parachutes, right. which help to further decelerate the vehicle and allow the vehicle to proceed safely to the splashdown zone uh, in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, the vehicle's velocity at drogue deployment is about 350 miles per hour, and they deploy at about 18,000 feet. From that deploy, it's a pretty quick succession of events, right? We deploy the drugs very quickly after. There we go. We've seen the drugs deploy now. Live view from onboard Dragon Endeavor of those drogue parachutes. Capsule's going about 350 miles per hour. Nominal ascent rate for two healthy drogues. It's what you love to hear from inside yeah, the capsule. Exactly. Because unfortunately, they can't see right. uh, the parachutes. So to hear that call out that their drogues are healthy, it's great news. So there's a better shot of Beautiful those drogue shot. parachutes from our tracking work. camera. You know, and having that single voice at the core talking to crew, coming, at, letting crew know that they're going into a planned LOS mm -hmm. and then coming back. All right, there's the four mains deploying. All right, so we visual. have visual on four mains. So there we heard that confirmation of four mains deploying. And the center is nominal. Okay. 
gorgeous shot of those four main parachutes. 1,000 meters. Copy, 1,000 meters. So just the crew reporting that they're only 1,000 meters right. uh, from splashdown. Right. Landing in water is simpler, therefore more reliable, um, and it provides more margin against unlikely parachute issues. Um, you know, we had to learn how to make Dragon waterproof, <laughs> but once you do, that's it. It's a rinse, review, reuse type process. Right. 800 meters. Copy 800. Once again, our Axiom 1 crew is targeting a splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean uh, at our Jacksonville recovery zone. The recovery teams uh, are in the area waiting for that splashdown confirmation. Scheduled for about two minutes from now, according to our clocks. 600 meters. Copy, 600. So we can see that capsule there, as I mentioned before, you know, when we saw it on station and of course during launch, it, you know, it was pure white. Right. <laughs> it is no longer. Right. Uh, we now have really a beautiful shot of that toasted marshmallow. Um, you know, that, that thermal protection, those thermal protection systems, right. um, you know, keep the crew safe. Copy 400. And like you said, you know, that's, that's a testament to the design of the vehicle doing exactly what it was designed to do and what it has Absolutely. to do to do it safely. And like you said, rinse, reuse, right? It's all part of reusable space flight. First live view of our crew there from inside the Dragon capsule now that they have re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. 200 meters bracing for impact. Copy bracing. I think I see that zero G indicator in the lap of mission specialist Mark Pathy there. That's right. <laughs> the crew is looking comfortable in their view that we saw there, ready to splash down just a few moments from now. And right now, I think those parachutes slowed the vehicle down to about, is that about 50, 50 miles, miles per hour? hour. Yep. As you can tell by the cheers behind us, we can confirm that the Dragon capsule with the AX-1 crew has, has splashed down. Dragon Endeavor has returned home with the Axiom-1 crew. Dragon SpaceX, we see splashdown and mains cut. We can turn. SpaceX recovery ship and team that you see there on your screen has been waiting for Dragon Splashdown, and they're now making their way to that location. On behalf of the entire SpaceX team, welcome back to planet Earth. <laughs> the Axiom-1 mission marks the beginning of a new paradigm for human spaceflight. We hope you we hope you enjoyed the extra few days in space, and thanks for choosing to fly with SpaceX. Sarah, to you, Ken, the team, and MCC, and all the teams that have supported us, all the engineers, technicians, and we're very grateful for mission. Thank you. All right, well, good calls there from MLA and CORE. And we copy all. Crew excited to be home. All of us on ground happy to have crew back home. Now, the teams have been ready and waiting for about three, three nautical miles away, so it's going to take them about 30 minutes to make their way uh, to get the crew inside Dragon. So there we can see those two Drogue parachutes, which were released, of course, first, and right. then, you know, they are let go in order to release the mains. Uh, that's what we see making their way exactly. back to Earth as well, of course. <laughs> the whole system comes back. Yeah. Sarah, we're in section three. We think we're in stable two. We can't see very well out the windows. That's stable one. 
And Dragon, your comm is getting pretty hard to hear. Uh, maybe we can have Larry relay some of that. Yes, sir. We're just uh, confirming we've got fog freezing on the windows that we are in stable one. Certainly feels like it appears to be. Copy that, Larry, and can confirm we'd see stable one as well. Thank you, by the way. Uh, my thanks to, to you, everybody, all the people who have supported us uh, around the world. Just an uh, amazing job and amazing mission. Appreciate the words, Larry. So that was our pilot, Larry Connor, also just expressing his thanks. Now we can see the Dragon capsule. So I just want to, you know, kind of inform a little bit about what yeah. those calls were. So we, we heard the crew basically wanting to confirm um, stable one, stable two. Um, so that's basically just the position that the, ca that the capsule splashes down in. Um, so stable one being this primary upright, um, stable two would be, like it's a little bit more on its side. Okay. And that's why they said, can't really tell, can't mm. quite see out the window. Right. Um, I have a feeling they were like, well, based on, you know, the way that How we're feel. Feel fitting right. in the sea, we're right. Right. We think we're this way. Um, so uh, that's just confirmation of the position that. False Quindar tone. Yeah, false Quindars. <laughs> you hear Quindars uh, key up. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so the recovery teams uh, are now uh, starting to approach the Dragon capsule. Dragon SpaceX, we are go for recovery personnel to approach. You can expect personnel alongside in about one minute. Perfect. So there's that safe approach call. Understand. One minute. Yeah, so the reason why the recovery team doesn't just rush there, um, so Dragon is loaded with hypergolic propellants, uh, monomethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide, and they are toxic right. when you breathe them. Right. So for the safety of the crew, both you know inside and the recovery team, um, we wait for Dragon to you know basically double, triple check that all of those vents and everything are closed off and there's no venting from the Dragon capsule, like from those uh, Draco thrusters themselves. So that's what that um, communication was in terms of making sure that we, we got the okay from the capsule right. and then Mission Control gave the okay to the recovery team. And we can see them there. Uh, there will be an individual that actually climbs on top of the capsule <laughs> uh, and they are placing the the harnessing and the rigging and, essentially yeah, for hoist exactly okay. uh, the equipment that's required in order to uh, lift dragon onto the recovery vessel infrared shot there of that fast boat um, as we call it mm -hmm. approaching and they're basically doing another um, sniffing test essentially where they're you can see that they the team has um, has PPE on personal protective uh, protection equipment uh, respirators to yeah, respirator to do a, a triple check mm -hmm. that the vehicle is not releasing any of those uh, toxic hypergolic vapors right now, as we mentioned earlier this is a very you know coordinated maneuver right the weather has to be right the area has to be clear. You know, we mentioned how it's important that, you know, other people are not in the area um, because, this is, as Kate mentioned, um, you know, you have the, the safety aspects of the of the um, hypergol mm -hmm. that you need to worry about, but also just what crew is trying to do there. That's not an easy thing to do in the water. Um, having done a few boat maneuvers myself, it's 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 not it's not that easy to be doing what they're doing. So, having having the area clear for these teams to work um, and and make contact with crew. Um, but while also performing these maneuvers is really important. And you can see as well why we had to wait for such a super go for clear conditions yeah. and weather <laughs> on a splashdown day. Even with nominal seas like that, um, you know, this is, a, this is an operation that takes a lot of attention um, and a lot of work on, on ground crew's side.
Now, one thing I want to mention, um, you know, we have talked about Commander MLA Michael Lopez Alegria, how he has been to space before. Uh, this is the first time that he has made a water landing. You're right. So, You're um, right. you know, he landed back on land. Uh, with the space shuttle and the Soyuz, right. uh, so this water landing, you know, we gotta we gotta it's keep it interesting, right? Exactly. Gotta exactly. gotta um, you know, get to do something new. Yeah. So there we can see one of the SpaceX recovery uh, team members has climbed on board Dragon in order to start uh, essentially equipping Dragon with the. Uh, the things that we need in order to lift it or hoist it up onto the recovery vessel. All right. So on that note, Kate, you know, looking ahead at some of the operations ahead of us, you know, once once the team is done rigging, uh, the next big phases of this are really to bring a recovery ship. I'm waiting for a Dragon time. SpaceX, come check. I have you loud and clear, sir. I'll be. Have you loud and clear as well? Just wanted to verify a calm configuration update. For awareness, um, it appears we have a couple parachutes that are going to be need to towed need to be towed out of the way for the recovery ship to approach. Um, so there might be a slight delay to schedule, but we'll get you an update on timing soon. Copy all. All right, so on your screen, we could see the recovery teams basically lassoing mm -hmm. the Dragon capsule mm -hmm. in preparation. Now, we did hear a little bit of new information there from SpaceX Core, which is the crew operations and resources engineer, Sarah Gillis, uh, just letting us know that a couple of those parachutes that came down with the Dragon capsule, um, that you know, once the Dragon capsule lands, we cut the lines to right. those parachutes um, so that, you know, if there is a little bit of wind, the Dragon capsule doesn't get pulled along with right. the, the parachutes. Now, those parachutes, uh, we do recover them, uh, and we're, you know, we just heard some information there that we need to basically move them out of the way in order for that recovery vessel to make, the, the larger recovery vessel, the primary vessel to make its way uh, to the splashdown site. Right, which you can see the team's doing there, right? Pulling some of the parachute out of the way. And, and you know, it's a good call on, on core to, you know, have that comm check and then let them know, let crew know, hey, there's been a slight deviation to the schedule, all nominal, all's good, but want to give you a heads up. If I were inside Dragon Capsule, I would really appreciate yeah, exactly. that information exactly. because, you know, as we as we see how the the ships, or excuse me, how those boats are moving and how the capsule is moving, uh, that movement is a little less dynamic right now. But a couple minutes ago, I was you know I was watching the Dragon yeah. Capsule and I thought I would probably be feeling a a little unwell, right, right, <laughs> uh, with that rocking motion. So you know, just for mental preparation yeah. and stabilization, yeah. knowing, all right, I might have two or three extra minutes to get through this. Kind of acclimate I can myself do this. a little bit. I can yeah. hold on, right. <laughs> Dragon SpaceX for internal video. Go ahead, sir. If y'all are feeling up to it. Request permission to come on board via the display camera view only. Permission granted. Copy that. So soon we should be getting a internal view of, uh, soon we should be getting an internal view of crew inside the Dragon capsule. For those that have just recently joined us, uh, after 17 days on orbit, 15 of those days uh, on the International Space Station, we can see that the Axiom-1 crew has returned home to planet Earth. Uh, just a few minutes ago, they made their splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean uh, off the coast of Florida near Jacksonville. And there we can see our recovery teams uh, working the capsule in preparation for um, lifting it onto the recovery vessel. And there we have a shot of Mission Control Center uh, here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, where John and I are located. Yeah. You know, what I, what I particularly loved, oh, there's a great shot from inside the Dragon. 
So this is just after splashdown now. We've got a shot over the over the shoulders of Commander MLA and Pilot Larry Connor. So they are waiting inside the Dragon to be hoisted up now. Yeah, we can see that they have lifted their visors. So that's the clear part uh, there, which is currently on top of their helmet. But during the dynamic portions of uh, like of the mission, so for launch, for docking, uh, for undocking, right. and for a splashdown, uh, you know, we we do ask them to close their visors. Right. So now they're able to open it up, and um, you know, as we mentioned before, we we have been flushing the interior of the cabin as well as the inside their spacesuits themselves uh, with cool nitrox, nitrogen oxygen mixture in order to keep the crew comfortable exactly. uh, you know, throughout the recovery process. It's amazing to me all the, all the work that those suits do, right? We were talking just a, what feels like a few days ago uh, <laughs> during launch about how those suits keep them cool. You know, even just from the drive from, from launch, uh, from the launch pad, or from, from the um, uh, suit room out to the launch pad and then up through the vehicle, but all the work that they do while on orbit and then coming back down. Now, earlier, Kate, when you um, showed the shot, or when, when when we saw the shot of Mission Control um, during splashdown, for those who weren't able to, you know, join us while we were splashing down, I loved hearing the cheers uh, from everybody here. You know, it it was something I expected on launch day, um, but it's moving to hear it on splashdown too. You know, it shows how many people are vested in the entirety of the mission, not just launching not just on orbit operations, but coming back to, you know, a mission is start to finish. Absolutely. And that was really, really comforting to hear. Early Monday morning here, you know, there are still people standing outside of mission control here. Oh, 100%. Cheering it on. I love it. We wouldn't miss it. Yeah. <laughs> Live view there inside Dragon Endeavor with the AX-1 crew. They have splashed down in the Atlantic Ocean and the recovery teams are working to prepare the capsule for lift onto the recovery vessel. Uh, after Dragon is in, on the recovery vessel and you know, uh, fastened down, the teams will actually open up the side hatch and um, you know, poke their head in and you know, get a quick thumbs up from the, the crew and uh, you know, one by one we'll, we'll see the crew egress or exit from the capsule using that side hatch. So once that side hatch opens, uh, it's actually the first time it's opened since it closed right. on launch day right. because in order to get on board and exit the space station to egress and all that good stuff. We use the forward hatch, the right. hatch that's at the top of the capsule. But the nose cone was covering, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and the side hatch hasn't been open since launch day. So they 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 end the they got into the capsule on launch day. The that side hatch was closed, and so when that side hatch opens today, it's their first breath of fresh air yeah. <laughs> since since taking off. As we noted earlier, it's going to take a bit of time for the uh, recovery vessel to uh, to make its way to Dragon. Um, uh, we got a call from CORE saying that you know we had to get some parachutes out of the way so the ship can make a safe approach. Um, but at this point, the, the rigging teams are working um, to make sure that Dragon is ready to be hoisted on that vessel as soon as it gets there. Yeah, absolutely. As we've mentioned before, you heard us say it already today. You heard us say it a ton on launch day. Everything is carefully choreographed when it comes to space flight. Um, you know, the, the fact that the Corps communicated to the crew just to let them know, hey, there's a slight delay, or you can anticipate a, yeah. a slight delay. Um, you know, it's all about safety is what it comes down to. The safety of the crew on board as well as the safety of the support teams. Um, you know, in this case, the recovery teams there in the water with the crew. Right. That is priority number one above all else. And uh, just making sure that everything we is planned for step by step mm -hmm. um, and even in I don't I don't want to call you know the parachutes in the way off nominal because it that is a normal thing mm -hmm. to happen mm -hmm. but it wasn't you know we didn't plan for it yeah. right yeah um, so you know for something like that where it's like okay the parachutes are in the way cool you know, we have margin dragon SpaceX for private medical conference and you have procedures for that as well absolutely okay. 
Go ahead with the DMC. For awareness. All right, so we're hearing that we're about seven minutes out until we get to lift Dragon Endeavor onto the uh, recovery vessel that you see there on your screen. The arch that, so that that individual there standing at the end of the of the ship, there is an arch above them, and uh, that arch will actually articulate downward and um, the teams in the water will attach the harnessing and everything required to hoist or lift Dragon out of the water and into that cradle there. Um, fun fact, that recovery vessel um, the fun fact that that recovery vessel is named Megan <laughs> after Megan MacArthur Fantastic. who was uh, who was our pilot for the Crew 2 mission, our other recovery vessel for, for Dragon Capsules, which, you know, as we mentioned before, there's seven sites around Florida. Um, we have one recovery vessel here in the Atlantic, that's Megan. The other Dragon recovery vessel located in the Gulf is Shannon for, of course, uh, Shannon Walker, yeah. who was the first woman to fly on a Dragon capsule. So um, we we have Megan and Shannon on board <laughs> uh, in our hearts and, uh, and, of course, in name here with our recovery vessels. There we can see Megan making a slower approach uh, now uh, coming up to coming up to Dragon Endeavor. So once Dragon splashes down, there's uh, a couple of fast boats. Um, you know, I should I should preface by saying that the recovery team is um, about two or three miles away from the splashdown site. You know, for safety reasons, nobody can be super close. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, the team is situated close, but not too close. And those fast boats, the smaller boats. Dragon SpaceX, I copied calm on the whining noise. Do you have any insight of when that started? I think it started right at splashdown. Copy that. I was about to ask you about it. It's uh, fairly high pitch, quite loud, and it varies in frequency a little. It's hard to tell if it's a mechanical fan ventilation of some kind, or maybe some kind of... Um, so just a little copy dragon we hear it um, likely it is caused by a bilge pump that started at splashdown we're going to attempt to power that pump off let us know if it resolves copy All right, so just a little bit of interesting communication there with the crew inside Dragon Endeavor as well as uh, our team here in Mission Control. So when the crew was speaking, that was uh, Commander Michael Lopez Alegria, the teams here were able to hear background noise. Um, and so obviously <laughs> the crew inside Dragon Endeavor are able to hear that as well. So that was just a little bit of back and forth describing what where the sound may have been coming from or what it could have sounded like and it sounds like it might be one of the onboard pumps that activates at splashdown. Hey, thanks, Endeavor. Whatever you just did, stopped it. Right. <laughs> Good work Copy around. all. It was the bilge pump. There we go. It's what we do. We solve problems. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> it's the life of a flight controller. Right? Absolutely. 
Uh, so the recovery teams are, as, as I mentioned before, they're positioned close to the splashdown site, but for a safe distance away. Upon splashdown, the fast boats make their way out quickly to do the initial safing uh, in preparation of the capsule, making sure that the um, hypergolic uh, propellants are not leaving any vapors uh, around the capsule. And here we can see our recovery vessel, Megan, making its way slowly but surely uh, to the capsule and its splashdown site. Once again, uh, the capsule will be hoisted up onto the deck into that cradle. And in a very sleek and swift motion, that cradle uh, moves forward uh, toward the platform where we will see the crew egress uh, and head into the medical base. Once again, when that side hatch opens, it's the first time that that side hatch has opened since launch day, which was back on April 8th. First breath of fresh air since yeah. April 8th. And earlier, Kate, you were mentioning, you know, every, every bit of this operation, um, I mean, for all of spaceflight is safety first, right? And when you're this close to the finish line, it's even more critical to, you know, follow those procedures to absolutely take it slow and steady, right? Everybody wants to get across that finish line right now, but the mission's not over till they're safely back on board and you can open that hatch and get that breath of fresh air, right? So, For sure. you know, those fast boats make that initial contact and Megan is coming up, you know, in good time, following along with the timeline and making sure that we safely get Dragon back on board. We can see that there are some swells in the water today, um, but the waves themselves are, you know, almost non-existent. You know, really small waves there. Um, we can see that skies are mostly blue with some clouds. As we mentioned before, uh, with all of the weather factors that we take into account for, so things like precipitation levels, um, wind speeds, wave height, you know, uh, lightning in the area. Yeah. Um, those are all factors that play into whether or not we get the, the go for undocking and the go for splashdown, which, you know, over the last few days has been the, the challenging factor for us. Uh, as we mentioned before, the crew was originally supposed to be uh, in space for eight days, ended up being in space for 17 days uh, due to those, those, weather, um, those weather restrictions, essentially, where we, we just couldn't get go criteria met for those various conditions. Yeah, all those variables have to add up to the right solution, right? And you can have one variable, it's great, we don't have a lot of wind, but if you have rain in the area, it makes it really difficult to do those 24-hour go-no-go calls. Okay, so right now it looks like we can see that the recovery teams are preparing to lower the vessel's hydraulic lift mechanism into the water, uh, which will bring the spacecraft on into the on-deck translation system known as the nest. So Dragon will remain in the nest during the crew extraction and for the journey back into port. And the capsule is currently being lifted and set on the nest. Then once it's centered and oriented, uh, Dragon will then be translated into the hangar underneath the helipad aboard the ship so that we can open the hatch. And a SpaceX medical doctor will be the first one in to check on MLA, Larry, Aton, and Mark and see if they are ready to egress out of the vehicle. So we can see that hydraulic lift has been lowered and they'll begin to hoist Dragon up onto the deck. There's a crew member you mentioned who climbs aboard Dragon to ensure that the rigging gets uh, established properly to pull the capsule back in. Dragon SpaceX, brace for Boom. capsule lift. <laughs> One of my favorite parts of recovery is yeah. watching that individual. <laughs> uh, it's safe to say that, um, you know, recovery operations, there's a lot of training that goes into mm -hmm. it, especially for that position. Exactly right. Um, you know, to stay on top of the capsule as it's yeah. moving around and do everything safely. And accurately, making sure that the, yep, your hoist system is ready to hoist, right? Which we can see there now. All right, so the Axiom 1 crew is now out of the water, making their way onto the deck of our recovery vessel, Megan.
We can see some water splashing out there from the part of the capsule where the parachutes were um, stowed in. So that now is empty. <laughs> With the side hatch just above. So that side hatch is where the astronauts will egress from. Before we open the hatch, uh, the spacecraft's cabin pressure has to be equalized with the outside environment. And once the hatch is opened, like we mentioned before, that'll be the Axiom 1's crew first breath of fresh air since they boarded Falcon 9 at the very start of their mission <laughs> just earlier this month on April 8th. So there we can see that the capsule is now seated in that cradle. And that cradle will then be pulled what looks like towards us, which is actually towards the front of the boat and uh, closer to the, um, the, the bays. Mm -hmm. And that ablative shield of the, of the capsule, the TPS, you know, is sitting on what well, looks like a cradle. Dragon SpaceX, welcome aboard the recovery vessel. Recovery personnel are completing final checks and stand by for translation to the egress platform. Copy all, Sarah, we're standing by. So we can see the recovery team there um, once again doing testing to make sure that any hypergol vapors uh, have dissipated, that the capsule is not releasing any more of those vapors. As I mentioned before, the propellants that Dragon uses on board, you know, it's different than the rocket propellants. Um, the rocket propellants, we, we use our RP-1 and liquid oxygen, and in order for those to burn, we have an ignition source, uh, which is our T-TEB. So, you know, it's you know, like you, when you light a match, right? there's, a, there's a flame mm -hmm. or a spark, and um, it's different on Dragon. There, there is no flame on Dragon. The propellants uh, combust instantaneously whenever they come into contact, that uh, monomethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide, and they're super powerful. You know, that's why we use them on board Dragon for, um, for those Draco engines, but they are toxic if you inhale them. So we can see the crew there had their, uh, their ventilators on, and uh, they're just performing those final tests to make sure that the Dragon uh, Dracos are not venting any of those hypergolds. It's pretty amazing to see. It has been amazing to see the pictures while the capsule was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on station. And some of them just—they don't look real. It's yeah. so beautiful, yeah. um, but it is real. <laughs> and uh, to see, you know, images before splashdown and after splashdown—it's incredible because it just shows, you know, the how effective the the materials are that yeah. we use uh, on that thermal protection system. Right. As I mentioned before. You know, we, we do replace the TPS uh, for missions. That part itself is, is not reusable yet. So um, while on contrast, the interior, you know, the, the, the bones, the structure of the capsule, that is reused. Right. So uh, this capsule is now, has now undergone its third recovery, mm -hmm. having previously flown on the Demo-2 mission as well as the Crew-2 mission. Yeah, it, it really is a testament to the capsule and, and just the refurbishment process, right, that really allows spaceflight to continue in this day is the reusability aspect. Seeing how clean that vehicle was at launch and still seeing two stickers on the inside, <laughs> now seeing the third one and what it looks like coming back home. You know, it's a testament to that ablative shield because uh, you can see the energy that yeah. this is put through uh, on its re-entry. So it'll be excited to see this go for the fourth one. Yeah, absolutely. As we mentioned before, you know, the capsule it's going the same speed as the space station while it's on orbit, 17,500 miles per hour. Um, and it slows down to about 350 miles per hour during that re-entry phase. And yeah, it's just really beautiful to see evidence of that. Mm -hmm. um, So just for a little bit of orientation while we have this view still, um, the bottom part of the capsule, that's where the heat shield is, right. and that's the part that was essentially facing or leading the capsule. So the capsule re-entered you know, with the bottom part first. Um, the top part is the nose cone. 
that's the the part that if you were you know dragon spacex capsule translation is imminent copy imminent all right, so just a heads up there from CORE that the capsule is about to move or translate to uh, forward. You know, it's, again, just that communication to the crew because they, they can't really see what's going on right. um, too well outside the, outside the window. So just, you know, every step of the way, the CORE's responsibility is to give the crew a heads up of what to expect next. Yeah. So we, we heard the call out, you know, brace for uh, drogues, mains, Splash down and here, uh, you know, for translation movement. Yeah, really, anytime crew's about to feel something, experience something, you know, it's completely nominal, but you're right, without direct insight to it, the, it's really important for, you know, CORE or Capcom in some cases to, you know, play that role of letting crew know, heads up, you're about to feel something. Yep, and of course, while crew, you know, they're monitoring the timeline all on their own, having that, as we mentioned before, confirmation of mm -hmm. the choreography um, right. is important. Yeah. See that side hatch really coming into view now. Situated there in between the two windows. Just a recovery harness there in front of it, which of course, um, I know, will be moved. See a good dual view inside the a good dual view inside the capsule. As uh, on the right, you have teams still in respirators working on the um, uh, on the entry aspects of of the dragon, ensuring that it's uh, safe and ready to be uh, open from the side hatch. While crew on the left side is um, you can see over the shoulders of MLA and Larry um, awaiting for those ground teams to make ingress. PPE or personal protection equipment. And if you followed along during launch, um, you know, similar to crew ingressing the Dragon for the first time, there is a whole team of people uh, on the ground supporting these efforts. Um, likewise, during splashdown, there's an entire team of people on the ground supporting recovery. So as the vehicle, you know, not only is recovered from the water um, and is passed onto the boat, it's then handed off to people on the, on the recovery teams who have very specific roles. As we mentioned before, the interior for Crew Dragon, um, you know, that air pressure has to be um, equated to the external pressure, so that, you know, that's what's going on. Um, you can see now the crews have taken off their PPE. Dragon SpaceX at 36 minutes and 25 seconds after splashdown. We are go for side hatch opening. Stand by for hatch opening and egress. Excellent. We are watching the clock. <laughs> I think they're more than eager for that first breath of fresh air about to happen. All right, looks like that side hatch is open. Excellent. Looks 
flight surgeon stepping in there to do a quick check with the crew. That white piece of framing there is uh, a fixture that we'll put inside the, uh, uh, all right, we can see the recovery crews there inside the Dragon. Um, yes, we'll put that piece of fixturing around the side hatch just to protect it while the crews are, um, you know, getting out mm -hmm. of the capsule now. All right, so just the recovery crew there giving a quick reminder to the Axiom 1 crew how things will go down in terms of, um, you know, egressing or exiting the capsule. Um, we have said this before, this is something that has been rehearsed. The, the team practices getting in and getting out of, of the capsule. Um, but, you know, just a quick rundown, you know, they've had a, they've had a dynamic day. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's nice to have the reminders and it's good to just say, hey, we're almost there, but uh, a few more steps to go before we get you out. But regardless, welcome home. Here we have the commander, MLA, on the left-hand side of your screen and pilot, Larry Connor, on the right-hand side. This view, you can see a few more of the ground team members just doing some final assessments and <coughs> checks on the vehicle prior to crew egressing through that side hatch. making way to see our crew for the first time there. All waving, all in good spirits. I see a bunch of thumbs up. Welcome home, AX1. Lots of smiles on board. It's always good to see. So on the far left there, mission specialist Mark Pathy. Uh, next to him we had pilot Larry Connor, then to the right MLA, and on the far right Aton Stibba. Um, for Mark, Larry, and Aton, it was their first trip to space. Um, MLA had been to space previously, but as I mentioned before, this was the first time that he returned to Earth via uh, splashdown, so right. new experience for him. Returning home on an Endeavor, but splashing down this time instead of runway landing, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. I believe you said earlier that he mm -hmm. flew on uh, Space Shuttle Endeavor. Yeah. Uh, was it STS-113? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Which, awesomely enough, is parked here in L.A. And we got to go see it the other it day. It sure is. <laughs> So the recovery teams are just preparing the side hatch there for the crew's egress. That's that white frame you mentioned earlier? Absolutely. So just a fixture there to help protect the that side hatch during this process. As we said before, this capsule has been reused. We plan to reuse it in the future. Uh, so not only to protect the, the crew themselves, but also the hardware. Yeah. 
imagine that's the sealing mechanism, so you want to protect that as you're For walking sure. over it and making sure it stays pristine. So that was the footrest that we saw coming out. These detach from the seats uh, in order to allow the crew to get out of their seats a little easier. Also helps, you know, just increase the usable volume inside mm -hmm. Dragon. You know, John, right. you and I were in the training capsule yeah. <laughs> it's about two weeks ago now, yeah. uh, and it's. You know, it definitely makes a difference in terms of small things right. like that, which seem like a small or a thin item that doesn't really take up space. Right. But in reality, in terms of the volume that it occupies mm -hmm. and where in that volume yeah. it is placed, uh, it does make a difference in terms of mobility. And when you're on orbit in microgravity, it's a, it's a lot different. easier to get around yeah. <laughs> uh, than, you know, when you're stuck here on Earth with that pesky gravity. <laughs> yeah. pesky gravity. Right, and you know, I, I don't know if it's the same for egress, but during launch we noticed that there was a very particular way in which crew and ground teams had to ingress the vehicle uh, because of those volumetric constraints. Mm -hmm. uh, but allowing those footrests to come out does free up space a little easier. You know, it's been, um, they've spent a number of days in orbit, um, haven't felt the effects of gravity in a while. Um, so making it as easy as possible to egress the vehicle is really important, yeah. um, not only for their comfort, but also for everybody's safety. It looks like pilot Larry Connor might be the first one yeah. Uh, to exit the vehicle. See on the left-hand shot, the right side of that screen. So inside Dragon capsules, we use a five-point safety harness. So a little bit more complex than the seatbelt you and I use in our in our cars. Um, you know, it's really designed to be safe. You know, make sure that the crew's ergonomics or their you know the positions that their body is in during the dynamic portions of the mission. You know that they're strapped in properly, but also so that they're comfortable. Right. Um, so it's a seems like that's what the, the recovery teams are now assisting the crews in, in unlatching as that safety harness. Right. So we can see there Larry Connor starting to make his way out of his seat and onto the deck there on our recovery ship, Megan. Larry making his egress from the Dragon Endeavor. You can hear the cheers in the background for it. All right, those are his first steps back on planet Earth after spending 17 days on orbit. If it were me, I imagine I'd, I'd probably feel a little shaky, right? Because yeah. they're they're they don't have gravity up there. I've, you know, they did take mm -hmm. exercise equipment exactly. to to keep their muscles working while they're up there, but still, hey, it's. Sarah, we're going off calm. Thanks for everything. We'll see you on deck. Sounds good. Talk to you later. <laughs> Our last call there from MLA to say that they're no longer going to be utilizing the Dragon communication systems. They'll just talk with everybody on the deck. <laughs> So there we saw mission specialist Mark Pathy. He was seated on the far left, or at the left window seat. All right, removing the footrests on the other two seats. Like you said, I, Kate. You know, I have a feeling Aton will be next. Yeah. Uh, no, no, it looks like it's MLA. MLA. Yeah, 
that's certainly part of the reacclimation process is remembering those muscles that help keep you stabilized <laughs> in, in a 1G environment. You know, it's, you haven't used them in a few days, so um, it's certainly time spent after coming back home. Um, oh, just kidding. All right, so MLA did a little uh, change of seats there, so Aton will be the next one to come out. It's very, you know, that, that, that feels very on par for him. You know, we've heard that MLA really uh, was an exemplary commander for mm -hmm. this crew. And, you know, he basically just said, no, Aton goes first, I'll be last. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite phrases is leaders eat last. You know, make sure like everybody that. else goes first. Yeah. And, you know, it's just great to see that. Yeah. Aton making his egress and first dance back on ground in 17 days. Yeah, it's quite the readjustment coming back down to earth and going from, you know, regardless of how long you're up there, yeah. obviously it's, um, you know, the longer you are, the the more difficult the transition yeah. can be. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, even after the 17 days that they were in microgravity, you know, that's, a, that's still a pretty significant change on the body. Yeah, it certainly is. So it's pretty amazing to see them, you know, just take those steps yeah. and, and begin that reacclimation process. Exactly. Now, once they are... Uh, so for the three crew members that we saw exit or egress the vehicle already, um, you know, they... They walk off and they are immediately escorted into one of the medical bays that's on board. So the recovery vessels are fully equipped with uh, medical bays to assist with, you know, any ailments or uh, illness that the crew might be feeling at that time. It seems like everybody was in really good spirits yeah. and everybody was feeling quite well. Um, but, you know, the, that capability is on board the Dragon capsule. And so basically the crews just go in and get checked out yeah. by the flight surgeon and... Um, get those thumbs up. Yeah, just that capability to have that immediate assessment is really important. Um, e even if you are feeling perfectly fine, you're taking your great steps, you know, it's all part of the ground-based operations that ensure that you come home safely and you get out of the capsule safely. So there There's, we saw MLA slide down the ramp and now standing. Welcome home, Commander MLA. With that, all four crew members of AX-1 are now safely out of the Crew Dragon Endeavor. So you can see their mission control here uh, behind us mm -hmm. at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, um, checking in now that pretty much all the dynamic activities of recovery right. have concluded. Right. <laughs> At this point, we'll just be waiting on crew to make sure that, you know, they have those, those good checks that you were talking about. Um, you know, making sure that uh, all the medical checks coming out of the vehicle, that they're happy, healthy, feeling good. Yeah. All right, well, as the crews are now safely aboard the recovery vessel and have completed their journey to the ISS and back, marking this moment is Axiom's Chief Business Officer, Amir Blackman. Thank you, John, Kate, and the Axiom and SpaceX media teams, thank you for that wonderful coverage so we could all share in this. The AX-1 mission is one of the more visible milestones of our journey to ensure that space travel is opened up to more and more of the brightest minds and eager explorers from around the world who wanna make our home planet a better place. And we believe this mission represented by the US, Canada, Spain, and Israel advances that vision of a unified humanity reaching for the stars. Despite the strife going on on the ground, the ISS crew and our astronauts continued working together as a beacon of international cooperation. In the years preceding this mission, we at Axiom Space set out to develop the procedures, foster the agreements, and build the operations and support teams needed to expand what has historically been negotiated only between governments. And with every step, we've created new precedents. 